How's it going, everybody? My name is Agnar. I'm going to be talking about the book Shut Up and Listen by Tilman Fertitta. Uh, Tilman is a Houston native. Uh, he was born in Houston, and today he's one of Forbes 400 richest person in America. Uh, he owns the Golden Nuggets casinos. He owns the NBA team Houston Rockets. He owns a Bugatti dealership. He owns restaurants. Uh, Forbes referred to him as the richest resting tier in in the world, uh, and he is also the star of his own reality TV show called Billion Dollar Buyer. So he he has done a lot of things in his life. So the book is great. Uh, I already finished it, and uh, it gives a lot of great perspectives and a lot of great business uh, values that. I think anybody that's in the business world, in the restaurant world, in whatever industry you're in, I think you should definitely read this. Um, he has five sections that he talks about. He talks about hospitality. He talks about you better know your numbers. He talks about the 95 to 5 rule. What's your 5? So what's your 5% that the business is not doing great or what's the 5% that the business is doing fantastic in and uh, how can you keep how, how can you keep track of what the 5% that actually matters in the business uh, is what's what's going on with that 5% uh, and the fourth section he talks about is see the opportunity seize the opportunity and the fifth section is live your leadership so in the first uh, f- first section, hospitality, he talks about that every successful business in one way or another is built around hospitality. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of industry you're in, always listen to your customers, uh, always keep track of what their comments are, what, they, what their needs are, what they are complaining about, listen to your customers, what, what's going on and they will tell you what's going on in your business. Um, he also talks about the theory of be plappy, which basically means be fake happy uh, in work. If if something is going on in your life, if a relative is sick or your dog is has to go through a surgery or something like that, whatever is going on in your personal life, don't let it affect you. Affect your work. Um, always bring your happy face. Always be happy to be at at the work and uh, stuff like that. Because if the customer is not there to actually listen to you, even though that doesn't sound great, um, the customer wants the product. They want the food. They want the experience. They want something. They're not there to be affected by your mood. So. Always be in a good mood at your job. Um, the overall goal is to make certain a customer feel special. And the customers who feel special will bring you more business and tell their friends about your business. So basically, always be happy even if you're not ha- really happy uh, in the job. Always bring your game. Uh, also, uh, he talks about ply apply uh, what ifs so he talks about the story of that he uh, one day went and wanted to buy x it was the clock was like eleven fifteen or something which was probably just 15 minutes later than after they stopped serving x for breakfast and the the, the restaurant didn't want to sell him x uh, he basically the kitchen uh, should always set aside some eggs and just charge more for for eggs after eleven. Uh, so people who come in later, they don't they they want eggs. They're not there to buy anything else. So they just want breakfast and to leave. So always just charge more, have have more eggs. Uh, available so if you actually 
if if there are any late arrivals, then the business or the restaurant uh, has a product to sell to the the customer, the person that comes in. Um, he also applies this to a therapist. What if the therapist would actually uh, listen for his customer or, or his, uh, his patient for uh, an hour, not 55 minutes, and then let the other guy, other patients come in? What if he uh, added extra 10 minutes until the next person will come in so he doesn't have to rush out his patients. How, how would the patient actually feel if, if he knew that he had extra 10 minutes that he could potentially talk longer for or uh, because uh, the patient wants to be listened to. They're not there to uh, just be thrown out and not, not uh, being appreciated. So that that is two what if stories that he talks about but there are a lot more great stories in this book so um he also talks about in hospitality that problems are inevitable and inevitable sorry um he talks about that th there's always going to be problems you can't you can't uh, there, there can't be no, no problem. So, the always make sure that the customer get gets happy. So, uh, try to uh, get, uh, try to do something for the customer so they will leave happy. You can't avoid fire, but uh, but it matters how you put it out. Uh, and he has he talks about the five targets that he has um, uh, like hospitality means making the customer feel special it m means that uh, you always keep your promises if you say that something is gonna be done always deliver on that um, so build in stories of what ifs into your promises so what if we run out of um, material, if, if it's a building store? What if we run out of uh, equipment? What if something goes on? And always try to fix it as soon as possible because you have to follow through on your commitments um, and make hospitality uh, be a goal of everybody involved in your business because if one person doesn't show hospitality, it can ru ruin the uh, customer experience. He also talks about take the word no out of your vocabulary. So don't say, like in the X story, don't say, no, we can't give you X. Offer an alter alternative. Uh, say something like, um, can we give you uh, bacon and a hot dog or something? Just always offer alt alternatives um, make the customer uh, feel that they're being appreciated and listened to and never say just no because uh, say things that you can do for the customer not the things you can't um, another thing he talks about is cater to the masses not the classes so the biggest obstacle an entrepreneur can face is thinking his product is the only product in the world. Uh, we live in such a big world that it's almost impossible today to have a, a really, really, really unique product. So the, if, you, if you treat the uh, customer bad or if you build uh, product that only caters to you or something like that they just will go to the uh, your competition they they won't do business with you anymore so uh, know your products your services uh, and your customer experiences what they like so you can actually cater to the mass and not just a unique uh, group of people because you 
to grow your business uh, really successful, you have to uh, be able to sell a product or service or something to a lot of people, not just a u- unique little group of of people. Uh, he talks about the story that you may like liver, but you can build a business around liver. You could you could do that, but not 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 that many people will actually buy just liver. So always offer something more. So if you're gonna open up a liver restaurant or something like that, uh, offer other foods also because the more products you have, the more chance you have to actually get a customer to buy. Um, Also, know your numbers. That's one of the key things he talks about. Um, Know your production cost, your labor cost, your revenue, your gross profits, your uh what what the, you're paying the your staff and, and everything like that um because if you know your uh what your prices are you know your products really well then you can that will help you make better business decisions um he also talks about that understand your competition uh figure out who your competition is, what they are doing that you're not doing, what you're doing that they are not doing, and figure out how you can actually get more successful uh, just by uh, figuring out what they are doing. Uh, And also know who your target audience is. Um, Don't think that your customer is somebody and then uh, like three months later you thought uh, totally uh, wrong and the customer was, was actually somebody uh, way different so always figure out who your target audience is and market to them uh, now is the uh, one of the main chapters that I think everybody should read you better know your numbers um, if if you want to be successful you have to know your numbers you have to know your costs you have to know uh, your customers, you have to know uh, what uh, what the salary of the staff is, what your gross profits are, what, what everything is. Because when you know your numbers, that is the only way you can grow your business. Uh, and also change with the times. So if you figure, if you find out that something is totally different uh, today than it was maybe a month ago or a year ago or something, then change. Don't don't try to uh, keep tr- keep selling the same product even though nobody wants it anymore because it is outdated or just something has changed. So always change with the times. For an entrepreneur or small business, working capital can mean the difference between success and extinction. Uh, so basically. Um, if you don't have capital, you can't grow because uh, when times are bad, you you have to be able to pay for salaries, you have to be able to pay for costs of products. So say you're a really small business and you get 10,000 orders. If you don't have a reputation, the bank won't give you a loan. So you can't buy the 10,000 items that the customer just uh, bought from you. So have working capital at all times. Don't, don't spend it on your lifestyle. Don't, don't spend the money just, just because you want to. Uh, spend it on the business and have it ready for when times are bad. So like when a recession hits, you're, if you have capital, then it's way easier to out outbid your competitions and people that um, are basically the weak 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 links because they spent all the monies uh, in the good times and now in the bad times they can't even pay the bills. So in good times have money. In bad times spend the money to grow your business. Um, 
Often new businesses have little in a way of operating history to support their credit worthiness or collateral to borrow against. So that that way they are in a, their inability to secure loans isn't all that surprising. Basically, for new business, if you don't have an operating history, uh, how are you going to get a loan? So basically just build up uh, your profits, build up your capital, build up everything. And that way, in good times, you can go to the bank and say, uh, I want this loan. And in good times, the bank will most likely give you a loan. But if, if it's bad times, then the bank won't give you any any capital or loan. Uh, he talks about that uh, he he had had a business that uh, he had a lot of money in, but it was doing really great, uh, and he borrowed money, and then uh, a casino, Golden Nugget Casino, uh, was able he was able to buy it because he had borrowed money in in good times, uh, and he bought it in bad times. Uh, for, and outbid his competitions because his competition was all going to the bank and asking for uh, for the money to actually buy the casino but he was already there with money so that's that's a great great story to mimic uh, borrow money when times are good even if you don't need it that's one of the key things he uh, attributes to his success uh, and always have working capital in any business. <sighs> Here's another chapter that is really important. It's the pitfalls of property leases. Um, always have, always negotiate your lease. Um, basically, if your company goes out of business after two years, or if you are doing really great and you want to uh, buy a new new place or rent a new place, how are you going to get out of your lease? You have to pay for the rest of the five years or something like that. So he talks about always negotiate your uh, deals because uh, if you have a business for two years and it shuts down, that's $5,000 a month for the next three years which is 180,000 in in this story. So that's that's money that needs to be paid. You can't you can't get away with not paying it. Uh, always negotiate your property property leases. I highly recommend you all read this chapter because it's really important. Um, he talks about know your numbers, make daily flash reports uh, and budget a priority. So basically, uh, get a meeting for 50 min 15 minutes every single day uh, that you meet with your team, with your staff, with everybody for 15 minutes because then people will bring their A-games. If, if they don't bring their A-games, uh, they don't bring it in like 50, 50 minutes. If it's an hour long or something, uh, meeting, then people won't won't prepare for it and they will just sit there and do nothing because it, they figure they have so much time and then nothing else gets done. Um, if you don't master your numbers, partner with somebody that can. So basically in this he's talking about um, never, never ever hire somebody that does the exactly that does exactly the same thing as you. Always hi hire for your weaknesses. Um, so if you're bad at, num at running numbers, then hire somebody who can run the numbers. Uh, and you do all the other stuff that needs to be done. Um, he also talks about the 95 to 5 rule, uh, it, which basically means that Successful businesses are good at about 95% of what they do. It's the remaining 5% that can determine whether the business excels or not. Um, 
the five percent can be negative. So, like if a servant brings a, a drink without a napkin, uh, that that shows that there's no standard standards in the business uh, or the restaurants or something like that. Um, so, always find out what your weaknesses are, what your five percent that's uh, what that can actually ruin your business. Um, for example, if a four-person table has three different, uh, if it has three three chairs that are the same, then one that's not not the same uh, that doesn't match the three, then that that shows that the business is doesn't have actually aren't actually keeping track of what's happening. So, uh, but the five percent don't have to be negative. Uh, if you know your repeating customers, if you know where they want to sit, if you know um, just basic stuff about the customer, the repeating customers or something like that, that can actually make the customer feel special and feel like they're being appreciated. So, uh, the five percent of the business could be uh, what makes it excels or what makes it fail. Um, know you and leverage your strengths. Uh, so basically, hire for the stuff that you're not great at and um, build on your strengths. You you can work on your weaknesses, but you have to act, really work on your strengths because that's what you're good at. Don't try. Don't spend way too much time working on your weaknesses. Uh, just to work on them, basically work more on your uh, on your strengths, and that can actually build up the company. Um, and also ask ask your partner, ask your uh, family member, ask uh, your friends, ask people what they believe your strengths are, because that way you can actually uh, figure out what your strengths are and how you can fix them or how to can build on them. Um, if you have a strength, build on it, lean on it, don't be afraid to assert your strengths for the good of the business. Uh, it talks about always partner with somebody that uh, is, has the strength that you have weaknesses. So basically hire for the skills that you don't have. Um, because that uh, if you know your business lacks a certain skill set, Bring in somebody who can address that the void. That way, your business is uh, way way better equipped to handle all all kinds of situations. Uh, he talks about uh, don't ever lose the hunger. Always uh, surround yourself and work with people who are who are as bit as motivated as you. Always be hungry uh, for for better, for more success, for for more su- uh, for always always work on on being really hungry for uh, for success.